to everyone asking, Fern, are you here? Are you dead? Are you alive? I am alive, you know? Uh, I've been alive my whole life, actually, uh, surprisingly. And I think I'm going to keep being alive till the day I die. So, you know, uh, that's a goal I have and I, I'm going to keep to it. Anyway, what has risen me from my grave, so to say, is that there's a video game coming out soon that I'm very, very excited for. Um, it's called The Quarry. For those of you that don't know, it's created by the company Supermassive, which is the company that produced Until Dawn and the Dark Pictures Anthology, two series that I deeply love. Or, well, one's a series, the other's just a game. <laughs> anyway, um, for this new game they're creating, The Quarry, I have some theories about it that I'm very excited to share, and I have a little bit of evidence to support it, especially one that I'm very interested in. Um, but the thing is, before I do that, I have to give a little bit of a background into Supermassive games in general, because this is going to be important in order to understand why I think what I think. So Supermassive, as I said, they made Until Dawn, The Dark Pictures, Hidden Agenda, some other stuff as well. They have a very common trend in the games they produce. Now be aware, this trend is, um, you know, if you don't want to know about the tropes they typically like to use in their video games, you want to go in completely blind, I suggest you go play their games before you hear what I'm about to say. I'm not going to give information on the specific video games, but I'm just going to say the trope that they like to use, which is one of, one of the many tropes. They love twists. They love twists. In almost every single game they've produced, there's been a significant twist. Until dawn, I'm not going to say what it is, but let's just say you start off the first part of the game really thinking one thing and then they twist it hard and it kind of changes the rest of the game um, very significantly. Um, the Dark Pictures Anthology, which are significantly shorter than um, Until Dawn, by the way. Until Dawn is about eight hours long. The Dark Pictures Anthology each, there's three games in it right now. They're each about three to four hours long. There's a twist in every single one of them. You start the game thinking one thing, and then at the very end about, they do a twist that will change the context of what you know. Um, for better or for worse, there's one game in particular that I did not like the twist for. Um, everyone knows what it is. There's no secret here. If you've played the games, you know what I'm talking about, but that's besides the point. It's, it, it just bothers me because that was my favorite game. I loved it so much until the twist at the very end, which is like, Oh, your red herring was so good. You should have just stuck with the red herring. Whatever. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine, but I'm fine enough. Anyway, the important thing about these twists is that before the game releases, you can usually predict what the main threat is going to be. Not always, but like usually if you look deep into it enough, you can figure it out. The thing is, it's very hard, if not impossible, to figure out what the twist is. Uh, usually it's because, you know, there's, there's no, they don't hint it. They don't tell you what the twists are going to be. And the thing is, the quarry hasn't actually done that. Supposedly. I personally don't buy it, and I'm going to explain why. From what we know about the game thus far, it's taking place in a place called Hackett's Quarry. And we're playing as guidance counselors who, after a whole summer of, you know, guidance counseling, are about to go home. You know, the kids went home the day before, so they're all alone there. And they're like, okay, we're going to leave to go home. The issue is that their car or something breaks down and they're unable to leave that night. So they have to stay there and then, you know, they get killed or whatever there because monsters and bad things. And ooh, spooky, spooky, spooky. Now, we've already been told by this game that we're going to be facing hillbillies, sort of. Like, like evil murder hillbilly type things. And the reason we know that is because the character descriptions talk about three characters that have very ominous names about them. It's like, oh... They can't wait to meet you, and these people look very scary and hillbilly-y. And also, in the uh, video game itself, there is a trailer thingy, and the trailer mentions uh, the most dangerous game. What if we're out partying tonight, out in the woods, and we end up in a most dangerous game situation? Like when people hunt other people? Yeah, what, I mean, think about it. It's Camp is over, and hunting season has just begun. Which is a, you know, it's a book about hunting people. Which has everyone thinking, oh, these are going to be murder hillbillies. So for the uh, super massive fan, what we see when we thought of this, or what we thought when we see this, or what, you know what I mean, is we're like, oh, well, clearly the hillbillies are going to be the first threat, and then there's going to be a twist into a second threat. You know, one would think that. One would be wrong. One would be wrong. Because recently they've revealed the first 30 minutes of the game to um, IGN. And in the first 30 minutes, we can clearly see what the second threat is, which is werewolves. 
Um, there's literally a sign that says Silas the Wolf Boy. Silas the Dog Boy. We go into an attic within near the first end of the first 30 minutes of the game. And in this like, or not attic, basement, whatever you call it. And we, we see the werewolf basically. Like we, we basically, it's there, it's a werewolf. Okay, it's obvious. And not only that, we kind of knew there was gonna be a werewolf before because the cover of the game is the full moon. If you watched the, uh, the trailer very carefully and paused periodically, you would see the shadow of a wolf looking man, werewolf. Also, to add on top of that, there's a character which screams in the trailer, cut it off! You have to cut it off! If you brighten one of the background images in the trailer, which is like very dark and stuff, you can see that he has a stump for an arm, implying that when he said cut it off, he was referring to his arm because of a potential infection from a werewolf. Also, there's confirmed three end states for every single character in the game, which is dead, alive, and something else. That something else people think is, uh, lycanthropy, uh, you know, being a werewolf. So. We, we, we know werewolves are going to be in this game, and hillbillies. So there's going to be a third act, I'm fairly sure. And while I can't tell you for certain what I think the third act of this game is, because, you know, no one's certain, I do believe I have a theory which might be contributing to it in some way, which is that a character called Eliza, who's supposed to be the curator for this game- Welcome to the show. It's exciting, yes, and terrifying. <laughs> is not entirely human, at least not in the same way the other curators are. In fact, I think that she's a creature called a Nynx. Now, I know that sounds like really cringy and weird, like I'm a, like a two-year-old on their computer, like, I think that uh, this character is going to be a zombie or something like that. But like, just, just hear me out, just hear me out, okay? And then you can judge at the end, okay? Okay. So with super massive story-based games, they love to have this character that sort of controls the story outside of the story. In Until Dawn, we had a character called the therapist, which didn't physically interact with the characters, but he controlled the background of things, kind of. He was sort of a, he was sort of a guide for the player character. In Until Dawn, or I just said Until Dawn, in the Dark Picture Anthology, you know, I could pause and record that section again, but I don't want to. In the Dark Pictures Anthology, there was a character called the Curator, and the Curator sort of guided the character throughout the journey um, of doing whatever, you know, the player wants to do. The thing about the Curator is, while they guide you and give you advice about the future and stuff, they can't physically interact with the game. They are not seen by the other characters, really. They're, they're just sort of in the background, more so. But Eliza, who is going to be the curator for this game based off of the, um, the Instagram story and the stuff we've been seeing about it, Eliza is different. Because we see in the first 30 minutes of the game that have been teased to us, that she has been seen by the other characters and she has been interacted with them. She is diegetic to the story, to the characters. She is one in the story. She is not just for the player, she's for the characters. What? Hello, motherfucker. What the hell was that? Which means that she has her own background and story related to the game within the game. Now here's something we know about her. She is an elderly woman, sort of. She runs this fortune telling shop. And also according to the first 30 minutes of the teaser, well, she likes to walk up behind people in a weird ghosty form and scare them, I guess. I mean, hey, you do you, you know, if that, if that floats your boats on Thursday afternoons, have fun. Um, but yeah, so that's what she likes to do, I guess. But then we have information about a creature called a Nynx. So if you're interested in Supermassive and you keep up with their uh, information and stuff, you know that in preparation for this game, they've been releasing podcasts that take place within the universe of the quarry. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal, during which we take you down an untrodden path to the land of mind f***ery, leaving you wide-eyed and wondering, yet hopefully answering some questions along the way. I'm Grace. Anton? Oh, um, I'm Anton. And together, we hope to prove the involvement of supernatural phenomenon in real-world mysteries. What? No, you hope to prove it. I'm just here to keep you on the straight and narrow. Anyway, in their second podcast, 
They're talking about Bigfoot. That's like the main thing of the podcast and, and about the disappearance of a woman and what may have contributed to it. Was it Bigfoot? Ooh. Well, here they mention a few other monsters as well. The Wendigo, a werewolf, and an X. Now, what do we know about, about these characters, okay? We know that a Wendigo was used in a previous supermassive game. If you don't know what it is, well, uh, I'm sorry. I guess that might be a little bit of spoilers, but there was one. We know that the werewolf is probably going to be in this game. And we know that Nynx, well, we don't know anything about the Nynx, actually. But that's okay. And do you know why that's okay? Because they actually take time out of their podcast about Bigfoot at the moment to tell us what a Nynx is. Something big has got to be a foot, if not big foot, maybe Wendigos or the Nyx? I know I'm gonna regret this, but what is the Nyx? The Nyx has got some serious issues, my friend. It's an aquatic humanoid that lures kids to water and drowns them because it's lonely. Most active on Midsummer's Night, Christmas Eve, and Thursdays. Wait, 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 Thursdays? Yeah, maybe Thursday is the Nyx's Friday, like after a long, tough week at work, he just wants to let his hair down, maybe drown some kids. Three-day weekend, baby. Okay, so the Nyx is not someone you'd want to go for a beer with. Yeah, I'd say, even as a single girl, I wouldn't go for a drink with the Nyx. But Bigfoot, what? I mean, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, of course, yes. I would, you, yeah, with of Bigfoot, course? yeah. Of course you date Bigfoot? But here's some other stuff I found out about the Nynx myself, because I was interested, so I went online, I did a little bit of research, I googled stuff, like, call it research if you want. But anyway, I went online and I looked up some stuff and I found out a little bit more about the Nynx. So here's one of the main things about them. They can shapeshift. They can shapeshift into the form of a human. In fact, that's one of the main parts of their lore. They're really um, good singers. They have the ability to see the future. Uh, they're really good at prophecy and stuff like that. Um, they often appear as either young maiden ladies or older women, like elderly women. And also, they um, you can defeat them by saying their name, like by yelling their name at them. Um, that's not really related, that last part. I just thought it was interesting to bring up, you know? The more you know, the more you know. Um, you can tell your friends you know that now. I guess you didn't know before. But anyway, after hearing this in the uh, the podcast, that they took out a moment to talk about this, which wasn't really related, and it was the only creature to be brought up that wasn't in a previous game besides Bigfoot, which again was the point of that podcast. I don't know. I thought that was very interesting. And you know what? I'm going to make some connections for you right now. We're going we're gonna to do a little bit of parsing together, one might say. What do we know about Nyx and you know, the stuff about them. Well, Nyx often appear as elderly women. They have an aptitude for prophecy. They can turn invisible. They are sometimes portrayed as wise elderly figures, as I saw online. Um, you know, that's pretty interesting in and of, of its own. But what do we know about Eliza? Well, Eliza is an elderly woman. She has a talent for prophecy, fortune telling. Now, also, in the prologue, we see Eliza disappear behind Max. Is that turning invisible? I can't say for certain, but it's interesting. Um, and she is sort of a wise older teacher character. Hmm. And she lives by a giant lake. Hmm. Now, here's two more pieces of thought for you. When does this game take place? Midsummer Night which she says, quote, word for word in the podcast, A Midsummer Night. Most active on Midsummer's Night, Christmas Eve, and Thursdays. But it gets even better, even better, because in the first 30 minute teaser for the game, we see a little time flash up that tells us the date. It's June 24th, uh, 2350 or something like that. But the, but the thing is, it's June 24th, okay? Here's the thing though, they don't tell us any more information than that. It's just June 24th. However, if you open up the back of the car and you do a little bit of snooping, you know, as we so do, you will find a rejection uh, letter to poor Max, sorry Max, to a college graduate program. Um, if you look at that letter, you will see that the date on that letter marks 
2021. Now, doing a little bit of hard math, <laughs> that's a bit of a stretch right there, but, but doing a little bit of Googling and stuff, do you know, do you know what happens to be 2021, June 24th? A Thursday. Most active on Midsummer's Night, Christmas Eve, and Thursdays. Bazinga! It's a Thursday, baby! <laughs> it's a Thursday! And what do we see there? We see Eliza walking around all creepy-like in the back of the car for a second doing her creepy Eliza stuff on a Thursday in a midsummer night. An older lady living by a lake. I'm sorry, it's just ticking off a lot of things right there, isn't it? I don't know. I just find that very interesting. So now, surely, surely, I say to thee, do you think I'm done? You think I'm licked. You all think I'm licked. Well, I'm not licked, and I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause, even if this room gets filled with lies like these. Sorry, that was a quote from Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, one of my favorite uh, films ever. I just said something that made me think of that quote, and I had to stop and say it just because I love that film so much. I, I love Jimmy Stewart. I would marry him if he weren't dead and, you know, married and if that weren't creepy. But yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I digress. I digress. Anyway, as I was going to be saying, uh, the Instagram story for the quarry actually revealed some interesting information. Uh, particularly, there were these two polls. One of them said, would you rather be lost in the woods or lost at sea? And the other said, death by immolation, which is like fire, or drowning. Now, it's interesting that we have two things here talking about water, but it gets even better because one of them is accompanied by a clip of a character within the, uh, what I assume to be the Quarry Lake area. You can see them clearly wading in the water, but it doesn't look like something they're doing for fun. You know what I mean? It's not like, woo, pool party. It's more like, Ooh, uh, something spooky spooky going on, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of get the feeling from that that there might be some more stuff related to the water there we don't know about. Um, and this is a lesser extent, not as much, um, but I do want to mention that one of the Instagram stories had a background that featured two wolves on it. And considering we know that there's going to be werewolves in this story, <laughs> well, 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 isn't it interesting they have two wolves on it and we have two other uh, stories that talk about water and like death by drowning and stuff like that. And what does a Nyx do? They drown people. Now, does that mean that a Nyx is going to be the uh, third uh, twist to the game for certain or anything like that? No. It's just a theory I have. I don't necessarily think that she's evil either because Eliza seems like a pretty chill dude from what I know from basically nothing thus far. But what I think is gonna happen is I think there's gonna be a story about the circus. Again, when we first crashed the car near the beginning of the uh, teaser section, we can see that there's a little circus area with Silas the dog boy sign and all that stuff. And there's that escapology trunk for, you know, tricks and stuff. Now, to me, Eliza's ability to, you know, do tarot and stuff like that seems like something you might also see at a carnival. So I believe there's a possibility that she could have been a part of the carnival in the past. Again, uh, I want to thank this person, I put their name on the screen because I can't remember as I'm recording right now, for bringing up the idea of her being in the circus just because I didn't think of that. But I think that's an interesting thing that maybe could have played a role. I don't know, but I do think it's something to think of. But yeah, you know, maybe she was a part of the circus and maybe that's why we see her here now. Maybe it was because of her fortune telling abilities or that she could have been a, a Nyx and you know, fish people are cool. I'd put them in a circus if I had one. I don't know. But again, like this is mostly just fun. Don't take this out of context and be like, Fern said this. So it's gonna 100% be true because Fern is never wrong. This might shock you, but I tend to be wrong a lot, actually. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all I gotta say about that. That's a reference to The Ghost of Mr. Chicken. Another fantastic film you should go see. It's a great film. Anyway, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Peace.